Uh, in this video I would like to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of healing. Um, so first of all, before we get started, I would like to say a bit about how I view the whole process of healing. Um, because to my uh, uh, yeah, understanding, uh, people have a tendency. They have, a, just like they have a physical body, they also have an energetical body. And that energetical body is more or less suited to certain tasks. So, yeah, some people have long legs, they're good at running. Other people, they have a strong back, so they're good at lifting things. Um, and in the same way, the energetical body has yeah, its own constitution, its own abilities. So some people might find it easier to get into healing than other people. Just like some people find it easier to go into channeling or... Um, yeah, uh, go into any other type of energetic activity. And uh, to me what defines a healer is that they have a relatively balanced energy body. So some people have an energy body which is very sensitive, which is very receptive. So they're very good at reading energies um, because everything impacts on them and they are unbalanced, influenced by this. But if this tendency is too strong then spending a lot of time with people who are unbalanced or who have heavy or negative energies can be too heavy for you. So you can't yeah, stay a healer if you have a, too much sensitivity. On the other side you have people whose energy body is very good at projecting energy. And this generally requires a strong willpower, uh, a strong personality. Um, but if this is too strong then the person is just overbearing. He just imprints his own energy on everybody else, uh, forcing them into more or less yeah, his path or her path and in a way just cloning uh, or propagating his own energy in other people. And this is great for a leader, but it is not great for a healer because a healer should actually give back the person to him or herself. So a healer's energy body has a balance between the ability to manipulate energies and the ability to be sensitive to energies. But more importantly, a healer has a sense of harmony, a sense of balance. Um, because there are of course many different healing techniques, many books, many theories of how to heal. Uh, but ultimately a person is a person, it is not some model out of a book. And if you try to squeeze people into your own model or system of what they should be like, that tends to not to work or, well, work out horribly. Uh, so you need to be sensitive to the person you're working with. What is it what he or she wants? Or what is it he or she is moving to? And their idea of health and balance can be very different from your own uh, yeah, system's health and balance. So you really need to be able to understand the person you're working with, to feel them, to feel how they are reacting, instead of just imposing blindly what you think is right upon them. Um, so if you do have the right yeah, energetic body and the right um, mindset to, uh, to be a healer, then of course there are loads and loads of different healing forms which are being offered right now. And um, it's important to realize more or less what is your own nature to find a form of healing which is suitable for you. But all forms of healing also have certain things in common. Um, because it doesn't matter what system of healing you use, there are only four techniques which you will be applying. Um, the first of them is moving energies. So often energies are imbalanced, left, right, front, back, up, down. Um, they get stuck in wrong parts of the body and by just moving this energy to the right place it can yeah, start flowing again. Uh, so the excesses are resolved, the shortages are, are met um, so that the person feels healed, feels more balanced and can move on. The moving of energy is also the, the safest because you don't lose any, any energy, your client doesn't lose any energy, it is their own energy which is just being moved to a different place. There's also very little risk of uh, negative side effects because it is their own energy, so the person can easily 
control their own energy and they can easily move it around so even if you do things wrong usually in one or two days the person will recover and will be able to carry on as if nothing has happened. So moving of energies is generally the first technique which you should, should learn uh, to use. Well, then we come to the second technique which is already a whole lot more difficult and that is adding energies. Um, there are a lot of energies available to an, uh, to an energy worker. Um, if we uh, listen to the Vedas there are 1200 different energies available to us. So the energy body is made up out of 1200 different energies but not all of them are equally important. There are lots of individual differences on what is the uh, what are the major energies depending on the personality, their astrological uh, makeup, the food they eat, different energies will be more dominant or more in a following role. And it is very important in a way that you don't upset the internal balance if you're adding energies. So lots of healing techniques they claim to be working with universal love and healing techniques which are good for everything and everybody. Unfortunately there is no such thing as a universal energy which is good for everything and everybody. Uh, so sorry to disappoint you but it's um, just advertising. Um, one thing which is true is that there are energies which are good for a majority of people. So there are many yeah, techniques with energies like the earth or the sun which for about 80-90% yeah, of, the, of the humans are very strong or very dominant energies. So working with balancing these out or uh, strengthening these by yeah, reconnecting them to their source is very helpful. But always you should be aware that you might have a person who is different, who yeah, your energy is not having the correct effect, uh, for whom your energy is not having the correct effect doesn't say that your energy is wrong or that you're a bad healer, just that it's not a good match between that energy and that client. So you can try to work with the same client with a different energy, um, if you have various energies available to you, or you can uh, yeah, basically refer this person to a, client, uh, to a uh, healer who has the energies which are more suited to that uh, client. Um, what is important to note is the reactions you get if you are feeding uh, an incorrect energy into the person. So often the person will, uh, will have more tension, you will notice that the energy body tenses up, the energy channels narrow, often the uh, energy either flows to your hand or flows away from your hand, either to fight in a way the infection or to prevent itself from being infected, it will either yeah, rush to the place where you're healing or move away from it. So these can be reactions that uh, show you that you're actually unbalancing the energy body of the person you're trying to treat. Um, and then we come to a more delicate technique and that is the removal of energy. Um, this is more dangerous because if you add energies the energies are not wrong, are not good for the person well generally within it to a few weeks up to a period of two months the energies will bleed out because the, when they're not replenished so the person will recover even if you make a mistake with the removal of energies um, it can be quite tricky for the person to recover it can take them years so this is a technique which should be used with even more care um, it can take even several lifetimes to recover if it goes really badly. Uh, the removal of energies is basically done to remove in a way foreign objects from the energy body. So the person can be suffering from um, an infection uh, which can be uh, yeah, negative uh, entities, spirits who drain energy, parasites, or it can be from uh, old energies, so energies from former lovers is a very common one. Um, or uh, yeah, just from uh, places they visited which have a very heavy energy which they are unable to purge easily from their system. Usually if an energy is not being purged there's also a lesson there. And it's important not just to remove the energy but also for the person to learn the lesson. So it, the energy won't come back again. 
Um, we have holes in our defense system, um, which often shows lack of awareness or a lack of acceptance for those types of energy. And unless it's also resolved on a level where the person has some insight in what they should do, um, then yeah, this problem will just recur and recur in their lives. The danger when removing energies is that you indeed remove something they actually still need to work with or learn from. And the danger of removing actually a part of their own energy body, so it's like amputating a limb. Uh, some people have the ability to regrow parts of the energy body, other people yeah, are not so good at regrowing parts of the energy body and will yeah, just lose certain abilities if uh, this is done to them. Um, more or less a similar effect can happen if you're adding an energy, for instance like if you're doing an initiation and you're not doing it properly. By the new energies you add, also existing energy structures can get blocked. Um, also removing their, um, the access of the individual to that part of their being. It's like clamping off a, per a part of the energy body by, yeah, in a way, pressing a foreign object into it. So in case of a bad initiation, that yeah, initiatory energy, which is not integrating, needs to be removed again. Um, so as I said before, with adding energies, you should be rather careful. And with an initiation, you're adding energies on a very deep or substantial level. And that doesn't heal uh, very easily. And the same with rituals or the same also with group energies. They're rather strong, so they tend to impact the individual very strongly. So I would urge everybody to be rather careful when yeah, considering an initiation or a group ritual rather than simply a healing. There's really a lot more to that, but I'll go into that maybe in another video. So the last technique and the most difficult one is actually the transformation of energy. Um, energetic transformation is basically the, the process of growth, the process of learning. And in general, the person yeah should be doing that him or herself. Um, sometimes, um, due to circumstances, often traumatic circumstances, certain parts of the energy body have not been able to develop naturally because there has been um, basically uh, during the sensitive period when it should be developing, uh, kind of been a very traumatic period where they did not get the support or love they needed or rather. There was so much stress and uncertainty and pressure that they could not spend time on themselves or developing themselves. And um, at times it is necessary for a person to, in a way, catch up, to have some remedial teaching in a way. And it is best, of course, if the person can do most of it themselves, but sometimes they need a little push, they need to absorb a little bit of, uh, of knowledge or gain a little bit of knowledge, not so much through direct, um, yeah, not so much through learning, but through uh, almost uh, being transformed by, uh, by having contact with that knowledge. Um, this is also evident in uh, many stories of the saints who were unable to heal or unable to understand the language, but yeah, when there was a need for them to do so, then yeah, they were transformed and they could suddenly read a language or speak a language or perform a healing, even though they had priorly not possessed this skill. So um, skills can also be granted in a way, but yeah, it, it can be very dangerous because the person might not yet be ready to deal with their that ability or that power. And also such a change um, yeah, can really shift the balance in the energy flows of the body and can have, have a lot of side effects if it's not done properly. Um, these four techniques can be applied basically with all of the energies which are in the body. They can be applied to life force or to the different chakras or uh, to the aura. And um, the basic um, techniques are quite simple. So to be able to move energies, um, you need to have a similar energy. So energies act a little bit like magnets, they pull on each other. So if you have an energy of type A, it will attract energies of 
type A and if you have an energy of type B it will attract energies of type B. So if you want to move the energy from one place to another in a person's energy body you turn your hand into a magnet. So you make sure that the energy you want to move is generated by your hand and it will follow your hand as you slowly move it from one place to another. So you're in a way guiding the energy and showing it by moving your hand where it needs to go and it will follow the movement of your hand through the body of the person you're treating. It's a very safe technique, there's very little risk of catching anything your client has and it has very good effects, very safe, so I would advise everybody to start doing this. Um, the second technique of adding energies is a little bit more difficult because you need to be able to either generate or to uh, form a bridge between the source of the energy and the recipient of the energy. Um, sometimes this is a process of initiation. Uh, of course self-initiation is preferable to being initiated. Um, all of us come here with connections to sources of energy, sources of power which can be planetary sources, which can be stellar sources, or they can be sources in nature, animals, plants or stones. And um, our body is a natural antenna for these energies. But if you can figure out what energies you are receptive to, and you can in a way tune into that energy, charge your own body with it, and if you have charged your body so much that yeah, you end up with a surplus, you can let that surplus overflow into the person you're treating. So if they like a certain energy and you can yeah, generate a surplus in your body, just let it flow into them until you feel that it kind of evens out. Uh, so once the energy in their body yeah, comes to a healthy level, which should be actually your own healthy level or close to it, then yeah, there is no more left to give because the lack has been uh, yeah, uh, resolved and the energy will stop flowing and that will be the end of the treatment. Um, location is important but not that important because if the energy channels within the, your client are healthy then the energy can be red redistributed by your client but it is good not to overtax the system so uh, working on or near the place where the problem is and other than that just kind of like treating the whole body and uh, spreading the energies around, moving them a little bit with the first technique uh, to help them integrate uh, harmoniously and so they don't create an unbalance in the energy body is very useful. Um, so the third technique of removing energy as well, here we get to the tricky part. Um, because um, removing energies requires some knowledge of the person's energetical immune system. Um, so unless you have really a very good connection with your clients, when, where there is trust, where you notice that your energies don't fight each other, they just merge very yeah, harmoniously, very easily, then it is possible maybe to remove an energy from your client. Um, if you notice that yeah, if you're with your client you're triggering some of their defense mechanisms I would advise you not to go into that because the client's defense mechanisms may be harmful to you or they may trigger your own defense mechanism and you end up fighting your client. Um, so removing energies is something I tend not to do in the first couple of sessions. Just wait until maybe after four sessions when you really have a bond and you have trust Maybe then you can start working with those techniques, but definitely not in the beginning. Um, removing energies is um, requires a, a lot more detail in, in being able to, to view the energy body. Um, because it is like looking for an infection. There are, there are signs of infection, like with a physical body it becomes red, it becomes swollen. Um, you see pus and in the same way the energy body also has a reaction. Uh, you can see wounds, uh, lesions in the energy body where uh, yeah, it is trying to fight the infection. Often the energy around the uh, affected area is blocked off to yeah, prevent the spread of the infection. 
but it requires yeah, a good ability to perceive the energy body, to really find out like okay there is an energy here which should not be here and then of course you have to take away the infecting force without removing or damaging the, the host body um, and that's a tricky thing like strengthening the, the the own person's energy body making it more able to fight the infection is, is relatively safe but if you start cutting you're always going to yeah, create some upset some damage to the host as well. So besides removing the negative energy, which should be as clean as possible, as sterile as possible, um, you should also yeah, apply some healing energies so the, en so the host body will recover, otherwise that weakened area will become easily reinfected. Um, the person who is performing the treatment and also the space where the treatment is being performed need to be energetically sterile. To um, remove an energy you in a way have to uh, bypass certain of the immune systems and new and new yeah, parasites could jump in while that is being done it's just like an operation in uh, on the physical body so you really need to sterilize yourself your client as much as possible in the space as much as possible to prevent any new infections from occurring um, so you need to pay us really a lot of care to your own aura and the aura of the person you're treating when you're doing this. Also the energies you will be using are destructive energies to uh, often yeah, destroy a certain part of this of this negative force or to, or to cut it loose. Uh, destructive energies, yeah, while you try to aim them at your target, you have they have to flow through your bodies and they also have are yeah, heavy on your bodies because they're also eroding your own energy channels. So doing this type of healing is kind of heavy on the healer as well. It's, uh, it's a burden, your own energy body gets damaged. If you do it too much, there's a chance that you will lose certain yeah, healing powers or certain capabilities, you will damage your own personality and ultimately you may end up defending yourself against harming yourself by shutting off your paranormal talents altogether. So I've seen this happen to several colleagues who did too much of this type of healing and yeah, so try to minimize this as much as possible. Um, one thing is also that many people like to work with white light and white light is very useful for this but it is also, as I said, a very intense, very high vibration energy which is very taxing for both your energy body and that of the client. So don't use it for if you don't have to. It's really a, yeah, a last resort measure to go into the whole white light business. Uh, because it is the energy of creation and destruction both. And yeah, not all energy bodies react very well to it. So it is kind of like a, like a strong drug. So if you yeah, give a person a shot of morphine, they don't feel any pain, they feel great, they can do everything, but ultimately it is destroying them. And with white light it is very much a similar effect. Um, so just stay away from it. Um, the last technique, the transformation. Um, if you want to go into transformative healing, you actually need to know what the person's process is, what is their spirit trying to accomplish. So you need to be able to distinguish very clearly between what the person's incarnated consciousness, their ego is saying or demanding or asking of you, and what the person's spirit wants and what the person's guides are into. Um, because the process of spiritual growth is not the process of the ego, it is the process which is being guided by his or her spirit guides and the spirit main soul of the person who is currently incarnated and that needs to be served in this transformational process um, and if you work with these um, higher inspiration they will often ask you or tell you to do certain things and with their guidance it is a lot safer to do this than just yeah following your own ideas or intuitions um, it is always a little bit of an unsettling process uh, because the person won't be him or herself anymore after the, the treatment. So often the person will have a relapse after uh, a treatment like that, where like they go back to the old patterns. Or, and it's very important not just to 
make the change occur in their body, but also to try to cement the change, to make sure that their social environment understands what they're going through or how they want to grow and support that new direction of development. Because otherwise it is yeah, just an idea, like a dream, which is forgotten again and the development won't carry on, won't carry through. So such a change can be done and just lie dormant for a while, that's also possible when the person is not ready to make the step yet. And uh, so then you can have a perfectly yeah, w good healing but have no yeah, symptomatic effect. So that doesn't mean that the healing is not working, it just that means that the circumstances aren't right for the healing to start functioning, for that new part to be really, um, yeah, wake up and integrate into a person's daily yeah, routine of living, of being. Um, so I want to say one thing more about the energies we work with. So there is a very big um, tendency to look for the highest, the greatest, the most powerful energy available. Uh, so this is a very, I find, materialistic, uh, capitalistic thinking, like, okay, we want more, we want bigger, we want better, we want newer, uh, and lots of old energies become relabeled with new trendy names, like Theta Healing and other, uh, yeah, interesting names, but the energies are old, they've, been, they've always existed, they've always been worked with, but yeah, by renaming energies, people can make it kind of like their own and their method. And this is, yeah, of course, a commercial process. They just want to brand something. They want to have a copyright on a technique. They want to be the only teacher, the only one who gives a certificate. But energies are not owned. Um, energies have their own teachers in the, in the spiritual world. There are gods and goddesses. Um, yeah, guarding the use of energies and also teaching the use of these energies. So it is not necessary to find uh, yeah, a physical teacher. But if you do find a physical teacher, they should be like a priest or a priestess who is in a way um, knows the, the, the energy and knows also the purpose and the desires of the energy. Because every energy has a, has a, is, is in a way neutral. But if it is guided by a god or a goddess, they tell us how to use this energy in a way that it helps us, it helps our spirit and that we improve by it. But if we use our ego to work with an energy, it tends to, yeah, not to work out very well. So for instance, if you look at money, it's just an energy, but it, at the moment it's harming us more than it is helping us on a spiritual level because we don't listen to the goddess of money who's trying to help us to, yeah, to learn to grow our awareness. Uh, rather than run after the power. So every um, level of energy work also requires a level of um, awareness, of growth in the, in the personality to work with it safely, uh, to understand the energy correctly. Um, higher energies are not always the better ones. So if I can make a compar comparison so in your country you probably have a, a king or a queen, a president or a prime minister and they're in charge of the country. And here in the Netherlands we have a prime minister and if my toilet is backed up I don't call the prime minister and tell him like hey you're in charge of the country, my toilet is backed up, go and fix it. Because that's not his expertise, it's not what he's concerned with, it's not what he's thinking about. He has a very different task and yes it is his domain but it is not yeah, his thing. So asking him for advice probably won't be very beneficial. And it is the same if we reach for very high powers for every problem we have. If we go to um, a divine power, a god, a goddess, an angel, for every little, yeah, if I stub my toe, oh god please heal it, that's not the correct way to do things. Um, because ultimately we have to take responsibility, we have to learn. We have to grow. So we should be trying to do as much as possible ourselves. And we should learn how to help ourselves. So a healing power is not meant to make you um, yeah, an addict. It is meant to help you to a next step of awareness. And um, of course we have differences, so we are not able to do everything ourselves. 
and we all have our specialties and sometimes we should trade. Like, okay, I, you give me bread, I will give you a healing. Because I don't know how to make a bread and they might not know how to heal themselves. So it is okay to trade. But um, every Im imbalance should be studied. It should not just be fixed. Because it's always yeah, telling you something about yeah, weaknesses or potential areas of growth. Uh, sometimes it can be just a distraction and it should just be yeah, removed. But sometimes it can be a very valuable thing. And to get the proper insight, we actually need a person who is able to explain it to us on our level and on the level of where the problem is occurring. So what is our body telling us? What is our emotion telling us? What are our thoughts telling us? What is our energy telling us? And on all these levels, we can have healers. So for you also as a healer, you should determine, do I want to work with the physical body? Do I want to work with the emotional body? Do I want to work on a psychological level, on a mental level? Psychological level, I mean more personality, uh, which is different from the mental level, which is more thought. Or do I want to work with even more subtle bodies uh, of energy? So do I want to work with planetary energies, um, crystal energies, uh, plant energies, alien energies? And... Um, Generally, if you don't know what type of healing you would like to yeah, learn, look at what works well on you as a client. Um, because energies which are relatively strong in you uh, tend to respond well to, to, uh, to the healing of another person. Um, so just try out various things. Expose yourself a little bit um, to those energies and find out like, okay, what are the energies which are really to my liking. And it can be a patchwork, so it's not always true that a person is attuned to high or low energies. But a person can be very good at the body, know nothing about uh, maybe emotions, but be very, very good on the spiritual level again. Uh, so you have to find out like what are your own vibrations, what are your own energies you should be you're, yeah, sensitive to and should be working with. And uh, the nice thing is because all these energies interact with each other, it doesn't matter where you start. So if a client has an emotional problem and I don't know how to see or to, how to work with emotions, I just know how to work with the physical. By balancing out the physical, you're working with the areas where there's muscle tension or pain or cramps. Um, these energies which are, yeah, in a way crystallizing in the body, they start moving again. And the person will start having dreams or emotional sensations. And even though I work purely on a physical level, also their emotional yeah, problems will yeah, start to resolve themselves. Because they are in a way being helped to resolve by their, uh, in a way, their crystallizations on, on different levels being touched. And it's kind of a, of a synergy. If something is resolved on one level, it helps to resolve on other levels. So it doesn't matter where you start. It's like a chain reaction. But if you start, the closer you start to the problem, the faster it will resolve. Because if the chain is too long, well, the impulse will become too diffuse, too diluted, to have a strong or very quick effect on the person. Okay. Um, so I hope this will be helpful to you who have an interest in healing. Um, what's very important is always to uh, also to take rest before and after receiving a healing or doing a healing. Because ultimately it is a transferal. Always it is true if two energy bodies are in contact they are going to be more similar. They are going to copy a little bit. And as a healer you have to make sure that your energy body has a stronger charge because energy flows from high to low so that the energy will flow from you into your client instead of the other way around. If you attempt healings while you're really tired then energies will flow more easily from the client to you and you might become infected with yeah, their problems, their negative energies or their entities. So if you're not feeling good, don't perform a healing. Um, same is true also for the person who is receiving the healing. Uh, receiving the healing is like receiving food, but if you're unable to digest the food, yeah, it's just going to come out the other end. 
Um, so you should be able to work with the energies and work with the lessons you're receiving from the healer. Uh, so you need to be open-minded, you need to be well-rested, you need to have some time to yourself and preferably some people who help you to integrate the healing who you can talk with about your experiences in your social circle. Okay, good luck and good health to you. Bye.